One of the most crucial parts of any mix is getting your bass tone right. It doesn't matter the genre. It could be rock music, hip hop, pop music. Precisely dialing in your low end is key to making your mixes sound cohesive and still have a lot of energy. What is up friends? It's Jerry with Black Salt Audio and today I'm gonna to show you how to dial in a killer bass tone. All right, so we're in Pro Tools now and let's give a listen to the song with everything on except for the bass. Okay, so far so good. The song still needs some work, but we desperately need to get some bass guitar in there. Anyway, let's listen to our bass DI. All right, it's pretty decent considering that I tracked this with a relatively cheap old bass. We're going to go for the classic splitting up the bass into two different tracks where one track is going to handle all of the low end and the other track is going to give us that clank. It's tried and true and why mess with a good thing. We're going to go ahead and duplicate the bass DI and then run them both into a bus. As I mentioned before, I tracked the bass part myself and while I did my absolute best to keep my picking at a consistent volume, truth be told, I am not a bass player and there's a bit of room to level things out. I'm not going for any specific sound for this, so the stock BFC 76 will do the trick. I'm going to keep the ratio at 4 to 1, attack at 4, and release almost all the way up around the 6.5 area. I'm really only looking for light gain reduction for most of the sections, but still have room for it to get aggressive during crazy sections. Cool, we're getting a more consistent volume without destroying the DI. I'm going to go ahead and copy this onto the bass clank track. Next, my choice of bass amp sim is... The Sans Amp PSA-1 that actually comes stock with Pro Tools. This is essentially a one-to-one -one recreation of the really popular bass driver pedal from Tech 21. This is what I like to use, it's real simple and I don't have to mess with things like cabinets and mic placements, but there are a ton of options out there. Jordan actually has a really great video on his channel where he tries out three different bass amp plugins for one of his mixes. So be sure to check that out too. I mean, after you're done watching this video, of course. Okay, so it's already sounding pretty good, but we're gonna go ahead and mess with some of the settings. Since this is the bass low track, we wanna go for a tone that has some strong low end, but not too much drive. Cool. Next, there's a note around 120 hertz that's kind of jumping around a lot. I'm going to use a multiband compressor to tame it a bit. Next, we're going to use some EQ to clean up some of the extreme low end and actually set a crossover point around 600 hertz to make room for our bass clank track. And this is where we're going to have to make a decision. 
do we want the kick below the bass or do we want the bass below the kick? Not always, but sometimes this is genre dependent. This track, for example, has a lot of double kick action, especially during those triplet runs. So it really wouldn't make sense to make the kick drum the basis of our low end information versus something like an EDM track, for example. But if that's something that you're interested in and you want us to tackle genres like pop or electronic music, let us know in the comments. The kick in this song is living around 100 hertz, so I'm only going to high pass the bass to about 60 hertz so that it can live below the kick. Now that might seem like I made it worse since it was kind of sounding like we already had some decent clank going on, but this is going to allow us to really dial in the aggression separately. And not only that, we can control the level of aggression depending on the section of the song, since we'll have all of that information on a separate track. Next, I'm going to throw on a limiter to really pin down those transients, especially since we want this bass low track to be the fundamental part of our low end. Okay, so that's pretty much going to do it for our bass low track for the time being. We're going to come back and add some extra mojo in a bit. But let's move on to our bass clank track. I'm going to go ahead and skip an insert and actually copy over PSA 1 from our bass low track. We're going to go for very similar settings, except we're going to increase the punch a little bit and really crank that high end. All right, next is a really cool trick. We're gonna take this track from being fairly punchy to freaking disgusting in all of the best ways. We're actually gonna hit the front end of the Sans app with a ton of 2K. And I'm gonna use an SSL EQ since moves on that particular EQ are pretty aggressive sounding already. Okay, I realized that I just did a ton on that, but don't ever be afraid to make moves like that. If it serves the song and it sounds good, then why not? Next, we're going to do a lot of filtering to make sure this fits in nicely with our bass low track, accentuate even more of the 1K, 2K area, and then add a little bit of air for more of that pick attack. Again, a lot of boosting here, and because we've increased a ton of high end, 
There is some nastiness that we need to notch out. Awesome, to finish out the bass clank track, I'm gonna add a limiter and kind of be aggressive with it. And then I'm gonna add another instance of BS76 to smooth it out and soften the blow, if you will. All right, so let's unmute that bass low track, dial in the clank and hear it in the context of the mix. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good, but we can enhance this tone even further. Welcome to the BSA magic portion of the video. I like how the low end is sounding, but I think we can make it even more thunderous. So let's load up some BSA low control. Okay, so here's low control. For those who aren't familiar with this plugin, we have a lot of videos that go into depth of all of the controls and such on our channel. If that interests you, there will be a playlist in the upper card, but basically this is broken up into two sections. On the left side, you have all of the controls to compress below a certain frequency and really pin that low end. On the right, you can enhance a certain frequency and give it added harmonics and character. Let's dial this in so that we can have really tight, thunderous low end that's gonna come across things like car or laptop speakers. 80 hertz seems to be the sweet spot for me. I hate having a go-to number like that because it makes me feel like I don't know how to mix, but whatever, it gets the job done, right? All right, let's mess with low control. Cool, I think that's sounding pretty powerful. Let's add one more instance of Black Salt Audio Magic and focus on that clank track now. 
Let's load up Escalator and this plugin adds depth, energy, and character with only one knob. Again, there's a little more going on than at face value. The knob behaves differently the more you turn it up, but there will be another playlist linked in the card above for more info on that. I want to add a little bit of saturation and depth to the clank, and what I'm trying to achieve is I want the bass to sit a little bit better with the guitars by creating a sort of 3D effect. So if you can imagine the rhythm guitars are panned hard left and hard right, the bass is sitting behind it, but I want it to be a sort of extension of the guitars, thus the 3D thing I'm referring to. Actually, let's jump to kind of a crazy section. Massive and I like it. I would pretty much call it there, but here's a bonus tip and kind of a newer thing that I've been seeing. New to me at least. We can achieve even more of a 3D thing by sending our bass clank into some chorus. So basically like parallel chorusing? Let's create a stereo aux track and make sure that it's coming out of our bass bus. Load up the chorus of your choice. I'm going to go ahead and use the stock Pro Tools one and make sure that the mix is at 100%. Cool, let's create a send from the clank track into our new chorus bus and mix to taste. We're not trying to be too obvious with this, but just subtle enough to where you can hear it widening a bit. Kind of like what you would do on a lead vocal or a lead guitar. And that's how you create a huge sounding bass tone from scratch. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. What are some cool and creative things that you do to achieve that huge metal bass sound? I'd love to know, let me know in the comments below. If you liked what you heard in this tutorial, there are links in the description that'll take you to our website where you can get a 14 day free trial of any of our plugins. We have new videos here every week, so why not consider subscribing and leave a like while you're at it. Until next time, I've been Jerry and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.